Hi, uh, welcome to this day five of 30 days of AI in testing challenge. And uh, today's challenge was on uh, doing a case study analysis. So the challenge asked that uh, find any case study where like AI is used to tackle real world testing challenge and uh, maybe read a case study or article or a blog and analyze that, share your notes, share your thoughts and so on. What I did, like all, all the previous times, I have added this context, which is uh, which talks about the source of my case study, which is Chat GPT sucks at testing by James Buck. So pretty bold case study. Uh, for last four days, we were studying about like good things about Chat GPT, but today I wanted to hear uh, other side of the things of the AI and I mean potential problems and analyze from that lens. And uh, I did this as a part of day five of 30 days of AI in testing challenge. Uh, I am Rahul Parwal and uh, the premise of this case study. So the pre-context is that it started with this LinkedIn poll, a typical kind of a question uh, on boundary values and with four answers. And uh, looking at this question and the four answers, Michael Bolton, who is, who is a expert software tester from RST background, he dropped in his analysis. So his analysis is available on the web uh, here where he analyzed this and he showcased that how an expert tester would approach this problem. I mean, how he, the, an expert tester would not restrict themselves to four options, but rather find out different possibilities and considerations and really boundaries and new boundaries and edge cases and so on. A wonderful article on how professional testers do their work but at the same time uh, the part two happened which is Jason attempted to solve the same problem using GPT using AI chat GPT and uh, he produced a 9000 word responses and converted it into an article that how he is doing a similar kind of a thing through chat GPT through AI. Now, third part is the most interesting part because that's the what the case study is all about. So, James Mark and Michael Bolton, uh, who are the creators and founders of RST, they studied Jason's responses, that, which he like got from uh, ChatGPT and then released their response document. So, this response document is available on the web. So, it's available on the site satisfies.com uh, as appendix ChatGPT sucks at being a testing expert. You could find this uh, uh, by a simple Google search and this is what the document looks like. So it's a document where they elaborated that like what kind of work they have done, what kind of uh, issues they have found with chat GPT and uh, probable symptoms or syndromes which I will be talking about in the time to come and then different levels of answers that chat GPT was giving. So while like m many answers that it gave showed different kind of symptoms and problems but like there were certain areas where the answers were okay and you could accept them so like four to four answers or seven answers in total which were of okay or okay minus category so this document this whole document is about just three things so first is i mean jason's prompt so what prompt and prompt engineering uh, he did and tried here what did chat gpt replied and then what was the evaluation and what is the rating and what are the symptoms that were observed in these answers and then a detailed commentary on that so all these pages are just about that and i mean it's it's a big big uh, lengthy document of 34 pages and uh, that's that's the idea of this uh, detailed case study so now what i have done i have tried to summarize this so that we could take a gist of it and uh, this i uh, tried to summarize this 40 40 hours of work by james and michael in this 34 page document through this mind map so let's look into the analysis so as i said there there were multiple answers which were classified and uh, all about 20 plus answers and uh, 15 were absolutely poor seven were of poor category four on i mean almost seven were okay they were like fine and then some of the answers were of uh, of the type which could not be reviewed uh, then GPT LLM syndromes that were discovered. Now this is the most interesting part uh, that that comes, uh, which is like these GPT AI LLM chatbots. Although they say like they have artificial intelligence, but uh, 
they lack these human aspects and what are these human aspects so first is in curiosity so it avoids asking you a question or does not seek cla clarification so while i mean uh, it can do a good job at giving you some questions uh, probable questions to ask others but like it itself doesn't ask you those questions or seek clarification it just assumes things it just creates context so that's one problem next is this application which is it image it can immediately change answer if you like show a concern that this is a wrong answer or or hallucinate which is like invent fact or make reckless assumptions uh, it could get a little arrogant with you in discussions uh, it could give you factually incorrect data it could do math mathematical errors because all in all i mean gpt is working on strings i mean it cannot actually do mathematical computations and so on so it relies on the data that it has and this kind of issues can happen capriciousness which is uh, capriciousness which is uh, i mean it will not even give you consistent answers for the same prompt so i mean tomorrow if you ask it the same question maybe the answers will change it forgets what it answered in the previous question and uh, that is another issue it could give you redundant uh, information same information again and again or it could cut its own answer i mean which it gave previously it could be incongruent with that or can get negligent of details so it can omit out things which even you have given with the prompt so i mean a lot of people say like give prompt and write prompt do active prompt engineering but i mean it could even like omit out things and uh, it's hard to find out how it's doing these things because most of it is all black box i mean you you don't know how, what is the reasoning behind these answers or uh, i mean another problem is unteachability so i mean even with uh, discussion or debate i mean it it cannot be improved uh non responsiveness blindness uh, which was an old issue when like gpts and llms could not accept images now they can so this was something which was discovered at the time when this case study was done and uh, that 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 is a high level of all the syndromes but i am not more interested in the syndromes i am actually more interested in uh, these responses and uh, what are these responses so i like uh, essentially for seven of the questions seven questions it uh, it gave good good responses and uh, here here are they so if you ask it to generate critical questions about the context it could give you some good context revealing questions for your use case similarly i mean if you ask it to cite areas where test ideas might be missed it works as a good booster for your edge case testing or your overall test coverage how can you improve that uh, a wonderful case is uh, if you ask it to share similar product stories or failure stories because you want to prepare a case for your bug advocacy or test advocacy or risk uh, uh, share potential risks so i mean uh, if there are similar issues that have happened and it's it's in the database i mean it could create and share you some stories or potential problems that can happen uh, it can apply like some critical thinking techniques on 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 the requirement and give you some critical analysis of that or what you might be missing so essentially testing out ideas prospective testing and so on and uh, asking it to highlight anomalies and discrepancies so it can do that uh, especially with code so it could highlight like what are the issues and possible discrepancies so maybe a flag flag tool i mean which could flag potential problem and then a human looks into that and tells that are they really and genuinely problem or not and then asking for specific test cases or test data for uh, specific generic use cases like localization internationalization so a lot of material already available on that so what kind of things or common things that you can try so such kind of basic testing info I mean, it could be a booster for that so these are like good potential areas where i i i see like a lot of uh, possibilities with chat gpt but at the same time i mean i don't see much testers using these possibilities so i mean uh, yesterday we learned about like not restricting ourselves and i mean these are new areas that are really potential and we we can use them and leverage through ai so that is my analysis and uh, i have now posted it uh, also uh, as my answer to the ministry of testing so that this answer is also available here and where i have shared this entire story and the mind map and overall analysis so yeah that's that's my day 5 task and uh, thank you for watching this and if you like this do share your feedback and uh, see you tomorrow at day 6 so i'll see you and looking forward to another task bye